first question today is called merchant acquisition. Let's say that you're a data scientist at DoorDash. How would you build a model to predict which merchants the company should go after for acquisition when entering a new market? Thanks for the question. Let me understand the context a little bit in this particular situation. I mean, first of all, I mean, how do we define a new market? I mean, is it a like situation that there's no presence of our like app before, or is it like slightly getting ramped up? Can you provide a little bit of context of how do we define the new market? Yeah. So let's say a new market is like a new city that DoorDash isn't a part of yet. And so we're talking about, you know, entering in food delivery into a new city. Let's say it's, you know, Miami and that there's maybe already food delivery services there, maybe not. But that's basically what we're going to call new market. Okay, that makes sense. Just like to basically draw the big picture uh, and then I'll dive into like particular elements and uh, especially a lot of questions that I may need to like ask from you. I mean, to get a little bit of clarification on this. I mean, first of all, I'm, uh, I think uh, there's going to be mutual effort to define the objectives, how we define success and from different perspectives, obviously uh, helping the business bottom line. And then we'll talk about like how we can analyze the data, how we can collect the data and relevant features. Uh, and obviously relevant to this particular question, a predictive model to kind of uh, basically predict success based on the relevant features that we provide. And at the end of the day, there's a lot of like discussion on success evaluation, either online or offline for this particular model. So let me understand a little bit more of like the situation. And okay, now it makes sense that it's a new market. We don't have any presence, but of course, I mean, we have some like historical presence in other markets. And we also have an understanding of what success looks like if we like introduce a new merchant. Do you have anything in mind? I mean, or is it something that kind of driven from the business or like uh, you're told that, you know what, this is, this is going to be your objective to define the success of a new merchant? Yeah. So I'd actually ask you that question instead. Uh, like if you were to evaluate success here, what would it be? Sure. I mean, we can define success in many ways. I mean, it could be just like number of orders per week or like daily order, something like that. I mean, depending on the cadence of the business. Uh, another would be revenue. I mean, out of that particular merchant, like would be weekly review or monthly review. And we can uh, pretty much limit the basically calculation to maybe first few months. We are talking about the ramp up process. We may not care about much at this at this point for long-term value, but somebody may say that, you know what, we also care about long-term value and uh, we should account for that. But I assume that you're uh, thinking about a little bit more short-term and ramp up period. Another potential basically could be customer satisfaction as well. Maybe reviews that uh, and, and rating for a particular new merge but because we are talking about entering new market, we are talking about growth. I don't necessarily look at it as my North Star or like main objective, but for sure, I will look at it as a guardrail. I mean, we want to monitor that. We want to make sure that while we ramp up, while we see the volume, at the same time, we don't necessarily hurt the quality or like customer satisfaction. So we're not basically, we may end up when we evaluate our outcome, we may end up like looking at different KPIs, but of course, I mean, we have to stick to one for the sake of just like modeling, but then keep everything else as like guardrails and secondary metrics, if that makes sense. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I think that makes sense. I would also say that that uh, we still have to go through kind of the main metric, right? Which would be understanding, you know, which merchants to actually go after at this point, right? So we're already talking about kind of launching them and having them, you know, be successful while on the app. But don't we also have to think about which ones would be interested in actually joining DoorDash? Sure, that's a good point. I mean, uh, I assume that it's an interesting uh, notion. I mean, because when we evaluate their, like, basically propensity of being successful, we typically look at any anything else, but we can have a filter that, okay, are, do they even like want to join DoorDash? I mean, uh, we can put it as a filter. I don't know if we can uh, actually add it as a uh, like additional feature to the model. Maybe not making a lot of sense, but I would just like use that. Maybe I can assume that whoever that we evaluate as merchant, we assume that they're already like want to be on DoorDash. I mean, for some, I mean, uh, it's after all the marketing done, after all like merchant acquisition, we already reached out to them and there are like express interest but then our objective is that let's say out of like 200 possible merchants in the area can we rank them can we maybe list the lot like top 100 so that's at least that's going to be the focus of this exercise in my opinion but okay. i mean 
getting their attention, I would say that would be more marketing side of the house. I mean, a little bit different problem. Gotcha. Okay. So we're setting the scope uh, and maybe it's helpful to then clarify it a little bit more than on what the inputs are and then what the outputs are for maybe this problem specifically. Sure. We can uh, define the outcome as maybe the number of monthly order, average monthly order for the first three months, something like that. Okay down and then we can look at of course i mean we have to learn from the past i mean to predict the future i will I mean, there's a lot of potential models that can be used before getting to the modeling part i would uh, see how much data do we have like from the past i mean is it fair to assume that for at least for the current markets for the established ones or even for like newer ones i do have access to for example some demographic data i mean some uh, the distribution of like basically income the the age distribution also yep. particular aspects and attributes of those merchants for example i can think of a lot of like potentially interesting or applicable features for example the menu diversity i mean or like how many items are on the menu or the type of cuisine can also be helpful because we may match it with like the interest from the public, from the like people in that area. I mean, uh, is it a good match or not necessarily? Or uh, we can include average pricing, and you can average. For, uh, I mean, define it as like the overall average of all the items on the menu. Or maybe kind of you can probably basically add average from appetizers plus like main course to like make it more realistic uh, in terms of what's actually people ordering. Another thing that I can think of uh, also like the competition in, in that area. I mean, do we have competitions in there? Maybe at least the number of competitions would be something to consider. Or they talk about like demographic data, which is really important understanding basically the nature of that particular area and then type of customers that we are dealing with. The the more information we have in terms of like the like uh, even the technographic like aspects of area as people with certain i don't know even uh, like technology or type of phone could also like sh uh, show some correlation with some particular cuisines or not maybe there's a correlation between tech enthusiasts and like more healthy options so i, I would also go for those kind of data as well make sure that we have the uh, like the most accurate picture of like the population in that area. Very important group of factors also would be location factors. For example, population density or proximity to demand as I define it. What is the distance to high density residential areas or like office buildings and whatnot? How can we define that? It's, it could be a little bit like maybe a secondary exercise and how we can define some features, maybe engineer some features that define the proximity to demand. I mean, if we Basically, if we can define some like population hubs or like from some office hubs, I mean, distance to those hubs would be also important. And other stuff that I can think about, I mean, of course, I mean, the looking at customer sentiments, I mean, all the interviews on Yelp or, or, or Google or other sites that are publicly available. And I mean, of course, that's an indication of potential success. Also, one uh, another element, I think I already talk about the cuisine type. One more thing that I can think of also like the the business hours. I mean, for how many hours are they open? Is it like 10 hours, like three hours a day or like more or less? I mean, that will obviously define I mean, the potential volume. I mean, there could be more. This is the initial list that I can think of. I mean, any, any comment on that? Anything else that you can probably add to this? I think that makes sense. I would say like, how do we then kind of go into building this model then? Sure. Let's get back to our objective, which is a numerical objective so it's it seems that we are dealing with the regression problem and if you are about to like uh, predict the average monthly orders or something like that average order per month i mean for the first three months there's a lot of uh, different models that can be used i mean as like easy as like multivariable regression models or we can use probably a random forest i mean to a little bit more flexible in terms of nonlinearity and also less prone to overfitting. I would probably start with benchmarking like few different applicable models. Um, regression families and tree families are like, I think basically the two families that make the most sense, at least at this point. So yeah, I mean, I would start with those models. And of course, I mean, eventually uh, you can only decide which is the best by just benchmarking the outcome and see which one creates the most accurate results. How do we benchmark the model or the outcome in real time at this point? Or I guess like 
isn't that time delay going to be like three months, six months, potentially? So what is, um, here's the thing. I mean, I think it's a good point. I mean, the, for, of course, for offline evaluation, we can always look at historical data. And then we decide which one to pick basically for the field. But to your point, because we have lagging metrics, uh, kind of it's gonna be tough. However, we may be able to like find some maybe leading indicators uh, that potentially have a lot of like correlations with the final outcome. Maybe instead of just like monthly, we can start with like a daily average or like weekly average, which give us a little bit more maybe more like. Uh, earlier turnout and uh, we're going to have like them as, as soon as possible that could be a better indicate indicator in this situation those signals monthly are going to be more stable maybe eventually more reliable but i understand that also the the, the speed of decision making is also like critical i mean we want to see if this is really a not necessarily healthy trend we kind of uh, jump in from the beginning and uh, maybe intervene and see what's going on i mean if we don't see a like a lot of like promise in there i would say in reality reality, you would monitor them, not only based on volume, but for with several metrics after I could go in the market with that particular merchant anyway. But from model perspective, you can always have that like retrospective uh, and look back and see, okay, how did you, uh, your model work? Uh, and of course, I understand that it could be a little bit delayed. Okay. Gotcha. So how do we finalize this uh this whole thing. I would make sure that we like in real life, in real business situation, you would talk to business and make sure that we have the common understanding of what should we pursue. I mean, and how should we define the success of a, a merchant? I think that's something uh, is really important. But then we'll uh, make sure that we have the right data. We have the right data pipeline available. We have all the bits and pieces. There is always a lot of details. I mean, for example, how we can avoid overfitting, how we can do avoid a spillover between like train and test and like validation set, how we can do hyperparameter optimization. But we didn't talk about that, but of course that's a big topic in there. How we can make sure that at least given the offline data, given historical data, we have the best model possible. So I think that that's a big effort uh, on that side. But then we'll, we'll go into like productization and assuming that we have the best model possible, then we basically implement it and, and we, we spit out. And it could be a batch processing. Obviously, it's not it's a real-time prediction. So depending on when it's needed, you can basically go ahead and run the model and spit out the outcome. So that will be basically how it's going to be used in practice. I don't know. I mean, any any particular element of the pipeline that you want to elaborate or like uh, you want to dive deep? No, I, I think we can jump into a retro. So... On my side, I would say that a couple points of feedback. Well, first off, actually, what do you think of this interview question? And uh, what do you think about the whole thing? Yeah, I think it's an interesting situation and very much applicable. I mean, especially as many businesses like think about growth. I mean, think about opportunities that are not necessarily visible to them. What's going to happen? I mean, sometimes there's a lot of blind spots. So in that sense, it's it's very applicable to many businesses, and um, also like interesting uh, from the fact that it's, sometimes it's not very easy or very well uh, basically straightforward to define a success metric. And everybody, depending on how they look at the problem, may look at success metric as as something else. I mean, some people like just like only think about volume or like depending on the north star of the company as well. Sometimes they just like think about revenue or customer satisfaction would be their the only thing that they care about. So I think that that's the challenge that I think it needs a lot of involvement with the business and the stakeholders. And um, yeah. one particular uh, interesting part of this problem is the, the wide variety of like fee applicable features. I mean, it's not necessarily coming from one source. It could be like several sources, even macroeconomic factor, microeconomic factor, like uh, a lot of location-based attributes are something interesting and sometimes hard to gather. So I think that that's a unique aspect of this problem as well. Yeah, I would say that I think this problem is much more about setting the scope correctly before diving into the actual solution that's needed. Mm -hmm. So specifically here, because like, it's such a large scope, because if we're talking about, let's say, entering a new market, and then the success metric is monthly average orders or revenue or something like that, you have so many models that could be individually placed inside of there, right? Like you have mm -hmm. the one that we just talked about, which was prospecting, right? Which is mm -hmm. like really important. Like we don't know if the company is going to respond to us. If 
you know, Cheesecake Factory is only in Miami or something like that, and it's a huge corporation, then like, are they going to respond to a partnership at that point? Or is this specifically looking at boutique, like individual merchants where we don't have to run like corporate, you know, business development partnerships, right? Where we're just reaching out to them. So there's that aspect. Then there's a secondary aspect of just understanding like demand and population density and controlling for that, right? So if I acquire, let's say a restaurant onto the platform that is has a ton of you know great Yelp reviews highly rated then we almost have to like estimate their throughput in terms of volume and just like how much revenue the restaurant does to then use as a proxy to see if it actually would be good on DoorDash on itself mm-hmm. right because we're putting it essentially online so that in itself is also another like kind of individual model and then lastly I would say just like you know, there's also the onboarding of the restaurant, like the ability for them to even do takeout. Do they do takeout right now? Or are we introducing like takeout as like a its own service onto the restaurant mm-hmm. that it's not doing before? And so I feel like there's a lot of different factors. And a lot of this is about setting up the scope correctly mm-hmm. so that you can solve for the actual problem where it's like pretty clear what the input and the output is. With uh, while controlling for a lot of those variables. Mm-hmm. So like, ultimately, I think what the question really is asking is like, how do we understand which merchants are, you know, the best for essentially accomplishing a few things, right? Mm-hmm. One, which is just adding more monthly order volume too. But the second one would also be just, you know, as you said, when talking about the success metrics, getting like repeat customers into the door, getting new customers onto DoorDash, maybe getting new merchants onto DoorDash because they also know that it's specifically, you know, a network effect here. And so, yeah, well, I say monthly average order value is, you know, a big metric here. I think that's a combination of a lot of different factors that's really hard to kind of predict up until that point as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I agree that like, the first big thing is that defining the right scope for this. And I intentionally avoided some of like secondary scope scopes because we wanted to like focus on particular A to Z problem. But to your point, even the prospecting alone, I mean, can be a separate situation. And overall, like demand prediction in the area, again, can be like solved with an independent uh, model. But then at the end of the day, you, you may need to like combine them. Sometimes you have to like maybe feed out come one to another one to just like, if, if you want to maybe automate the whole process or kind of uh, have a more informed decision if you may Um, yeah exactly and i think one part that i find helpful for candidates is if they can label at least what assumptions that they would provide towards if they're going to solve that or not at least up front so that the interviewer knows that they at least considered it and it's not that they don't know right Mm -hmm. because there's there's one aspect where it's like oh you're not saying it because you don't know or you're not saying it because i've already constrained the scope and it's much easier to just say it leave it and then be like, I'm not going to focus on that. I'm going to focus on this part instead. But if you want to dive there, you can jump into that point and direct the conversation there. So just a little meta analysis for, you know, how we might approach maybe the next question or for your upcoming interview as well.